This is a beginner guide to Webflow. If you're ready to take your first steps inside Webflow and create your first project, this video is for you. We are going to start with a blank Webflow project and I'll go over the essentials. We'll explore the interface and we'll build this project. It will be live ready, ready for launch, mobile responsive after this video. FinSuite, agency, product, community. <laughs> That's Evan Sweet. In the description, you can access a lot of resources, links, demos, and assets that we prepared for this tutorial. Before we start working in Webflow, we have a very important topic to cover, the box model. Understanding this concept will make Webflow a lot easier to understand, so let's review it. A web page is made of boxes. These boxes can be put inside each other, and more boxes can be put inside of those boxes. You can organize it however you'd like. Each box gets a name or a class. This class name is associated with a set of styles. So boxes get names and names get styles. We can add boxes, apply class names, and write styles right here in Webflow Designer. And that's exactly what we are doing today. All of our boxes will come together to create this web page. The very first thing we want to do with a blank canvas is to add an element or a box to the page. Let's open the Add Elements panel and click on the Section element here. I've just added HTML to the page, and if you're following along with this tutorial, which I recommend, please follow along with me, you have just added HTML to the page too. Big step. Next, I wanna give this element a class name. A class is a set of CSS properties that give size, color, layout, and a lot more to HTML elements. So this class will give this element certain styles. So for this section element, let's apply a class named hero underscore component. With a class name set on the element, I can now apply styles to that element. So let's go and set a background color of black. Let's have a text with a color of white. And let's go up and set a minimum height of 100 SVH. This will make sure the section is always 100% of the height of the screen. Moving on, let's choose flex to center the content inside this section. So I'll choose flex with a line left center. This means for the elements inside me, center them and also align them to the left. I just created the first element, gave it a class and applied styles. Now let's add a box inside here and keep going. With the hero component selected, I will open the elements panel again and add a div block right inside of this component. A div block is a very important element type and will be used very often when creating layouts in Webflow. It has many powerful uses. And for this div block, I want it to be a two column layout. It's going to have a maximum width for the content and then have two columns for that content. So I'll call this element hero underscore container. I'll apply display grid to create a two column, one row layout. And let's explore these grid settings a little bit. I can increase and decrease the columns and rows right here with these inputs. I can set direction, I can align, and apply a gap that will create some space for the items inside it. Grid has a lot of options and it can get very complex, but we like to keep it simple, we can keep it simple, and this video will keep it simple. So let's set two columns, let's align, center the content, and apply a gap of four rem. I'm typing four, R, E, M, enter. Rem is a modern unit of measurement. Just like pixels is a unit of measurement, rem is a different unit of measurement. And we'll be typing rem a lot throughout this video. That's how we're sizing out the website that we are building. Now we have our two column layout in place. Next, let's center this content and get that container right in the middle of the screen. So I'll apply a width of 100%. 
and that's going to make it take up 100% of the available space. Then a maximum width of 64 rem to make sure it doesn't go larger than 64 rem. And then to center this container, I'll use a strategy that applies margin left set to auto and margin right set to auto. Great. Lastly, I'll add two rem of padding left and two rem of padding right. This will serve as our padding on each side of the screen to make sure that content doesn't touch the end of the screen when we change the size of the browser. And great, structure set up, we're ready with our container and we are now ready to add the content. I want to group all of my content for the left side in one box. This box is going to hold the logo, the title, the description, and the form elements. So with this hero container element selected, I can go open the elements panel and add a div block inside it. Let's call this hero underscore content. I will select display flex, vertical, and set a gap of two rem. This gap will create two rem of space in between each item we put inside of it. Ready to put these content pieces in, let's now add that brand logo to the page with the hero content selected. I'll go and open the elements panel and add an image. This image is the Webflow logo in this example, but you can go ahead, upload your own image here and use your own logo. I'll give this logo a class name of hero underscore logo and make the width three rem. If you're following along with your own logo, change this value to whatever you want. Maybe your logo looks great with six rem width, up to you. And this is looking good, so let's now continue to the heading. Let's open the elements panel and choose heading, and this will be our H1 text here. Let's change the text to become a Webflow developer today. To adjust the styles of a heading, I want to apply them to the HTML heading tag. So instead of applying styles to a class, I can add styles by clicking on all H1 headings. And when I make edits here, all of the H1s throughout the website will get the same styles that we apply here. No class is needed. So what I'll do here for this heading is remove the margin top and bottom. I'll go and add a size of 2.75 rem with 1.2 unitless height. That's 1.2 dash enter. That's how we enter unitless height in Webflow. Next, let's go and add our subtitle text. I'll open the elements panel to add a text element. And I'll change this text to dedicate your time and transform your professional career. Notice how there's no all text element option like we saw with the H1. We have to go and apply a class to that text element and style it. So let's go and add the class text style subtitle. I'll add 1.25 rem for the text size and I'll add 1.5 dash enter unitless height. And then we'll go ahead here to the max width and we'll give that 24 rem. Great. Let's continue with the form element, but before we continue, please like this video if you enjoy the content. If you're looking for more Webflow content, subscribe to our channel. Every week we're releasing great Webflow tutorials that are professional, reliable, and highly valuable. So go ahead, give us a subscribe, like the video. Thank you so much for supporting. Let's get back into this and go add that form component. So back to designer with the hero content selected, I will open the elements panel and select the form block element. In this form, we'll only ask for the email address. So I'll go ahead and remove that field label and text field for the name. I'll also remove the field label for email address because we'll put this information in the placeholder text of the input. So let's go name everything now. I'll go click on this input and call it the hero underscore input, and I'll select the submit button. Let's call this hero underscore submit. And the outer box, let's call this hero underscore form. Now that everything is named, has a class on it, let's go add some styles to these classes. 
Selecting on the hero form element, I'll apply a display flex to make that horizontal layout for the input and the submit button. Then I'll add a one rem gap to add one rem of space in between those two items. Great. Let's click on the input and start styling that. First, I'll remove the default margin bottom on this element by adding a zero here. Then I'll add a height of three rem. Let's scroll down to remove the default borders by clicking on the X. And to slightly curve the corners of the input, I'll add a 0.25 rem as the radius. Great. Going on to the hero submit button, let's go change that background color to a different color blue. This is hex 017DF0. And let's scroll back up. Let's add a padding left of 1.5 rem, padding right of 1.5 rem. Let's add that same radius of 0.25 rem to curve those corners. And I'll double click into the submit button and change that text to subscribe. Nice, looking great. To finish our form component, we need to take the first exploration into the settings panel. This settings panel is located right here in the Webflow Designer and the content of this panel changes based on which element is selected. So based on what I have selected on the canvas, you can see the input, the text element, and the H1 all show different settings. This panel updates based on what we have selected. So let's go select that hero input so we can access the input settings. We wanna make sure the email type is selected here. Perfect, exactly what we want and we can update this placeholder text and we can change that value to your email. There we go, on a published Webflow page, our form is ready to accept and store submissions in the project's site settings. So we have our left side content styled, built, ready to go, looking great. Let's now go to the right side of the content, this big open space where we have the image. So we're going to open up the Navigator panel for the first time in this video. It's an important panel. In the Navigator panel, I can see all of the HTML that we've added to the page. Every box that we selected in the Elements panel is added in this Navigator panel, and we get to see how it is organized on the page. So let's look at the hero container and the hero content that we added earlier. Remember that the hero container has a two column grid style applied to it. We have the hero content as that first box inside the two columns. So whatever I add as the second box inside of this container will be the second column. The right column is going to be our image. So with the hero container element selected, I'll open the elements panel and add an image inside the hero container. I'll go to the Assets panel and choose the image I uploaded earlier to my project. I can go and add any image here, upload anything and go and add any image to the project. This one is a really nice screenshot here and let's go call this the hero underscore image. Now our content row is complete. Look at that. For a final touch of flair, just maybe adding that extra pop to our design that we're looking for, let's add a subtle, color gradient to this hero. With the hero component selected, scroll down to the background section and add image and gradient. Let's select radial gradient, select this bottom center position, and now update this white color to purple. I'm using hex 8661FE. You can use any color that you want here. Let's go add a 30% opacity to this color and then click reverse. There we go, looking great. Customize these gradient colors based on your brand or leave them out entirely. It's up to you. So this page is looking great on a large screen. Let's make sure it's also looking great on mobile devices. Here at the top of the designer UI, we can see the page on different devices. It's recommended to start first at the base breakpoint, just like we've done. Then when base is done, we can move to tablet. When tablet's done, we can move to mobile landscape. And when mobile landscape is done, we can move to mobile portrait. 
With the tablet view selected, let's click on the hero container and change this two column grid to a one column grid. The amount of columns changes to one only on tablet and lower breakpoints. This column change is automatically applied to the lower breakpoints, but the base breakpoint still remains at two columns. Let's continue with the hero component and add a padding top of 4rem and a padding bottom of 4rem to give some more space on the top and bottom of this page. Looking great. Now let's go to the mobile landscape setting. Looking good. Let's continue on to mobile portrait. Okay, we don't have too much space for these two form elements to be in a row. So let's go select the hero form and change flex direction from horizontal to vertical. Then I'll select hero input and change this text align to center. Nice. It's important to understand that the responsive breakpoint edits make changes downward. The changes we made on tablet will be seen on mobile because the styles go down. The changes that we made on mobile will not be seen up at tablet because styles go down. So now you're on the road to becoming a mobile responsive pro. So let's go and publish this project. It looks great. We're ready to go and we can publish it on a webflow.io domain name. I'll click publish and then this button to go and open this up in a new tab. Let's compare our build with the example project. Perfect fit. There we go. This page can be used for a lot of different use cases. Coming soon, lead magnet, information, landing page. You can customize your brand by changing the logo, the image, the background color, the anything that you want can be changed here and it can be a real landing page for your business. So if you wanna keep learning, you have just started your journey and you've just started building in client first. The names, class strategies, everything we use to build this hero component was built with one of the most popular Webflow frameworks in the entire ecosystem, client first. And you just built in client first. Congratulations. It's a set of guidelines and strategies to help build Webflow sites and you can just continue with this build for your first project. Using this industry standard, you can set yourself up to build organized, scalable, and maintainable Webflow projects. Links for Client First and other resources that we made for this tutorial are down in the description. Links, demos, assets, it's all there because this is just the start of your Webflow journey. There is a lot more to learn. And we at FinSuite are here to help lead you to success with Webflow.